Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Premier Injuries Daily Roundup. I'm going to start with the Carabao Cup. And first, Newcastle progressed to Wembley on Tuesday night with a 2-1 victory over Southampton. However, the win didn't come without its problems. Bruno Guimaraes um, was given a red card following a VAR review. A following a tackle, deserved, I might add. Um, but that's going to see him miss the next three Premier League matches, and we won't see him on league duty again until March. Unfortunately, that there was also a problem with Alexander Isaac. He wasn't feeling too well, feeling a little bit groggy, according to Eddie Howe, following a free kick from James Ward-Prowse that hit him on the head. Now, he will be assessed. If that's deemed that he suffered a concussion, then he will be out of this weekend's game with West Ham. If he's cleared, obviously that puts him in contention. And particularly with Bruno Guimaraes uh, suspended for that match, that could drop Joe Linton into the midfield. And that opens up a space on the left-hand side. And I would say that is uh, a possibility of a direct uh, Alexander Isak or Alan San Maxim fighting it out for that space on the left hand side. I don't think Anthony Gordon has had enough time on the training pitches to merit a start, but only time will tell. For the visitors, uh, Kyle Walker Peters uh, limped off as a precautionary measure, according to boss Nathan Jones. That was a hamstring issue. We've seen this before with Walker Peters. He had a quite a serious setback prior to that World Cup that kept him on the side legs for several weeks. So, given the fact that there's a bit of a history there and a quick turnaround, even if it was a precautionary measure, I think it might be a little bit of a risk to see him involved this weekend with the new signing, James Brady did start in that Carabao Cup game at St James's Park, so he could come in for his full Premier League debut. Ahead of Wednesday night's second leg, semi-final tie with Manchester United in Nottingham Forest. A few updates here. Eric Tan Hag, particularly coy with regards to his updates, but Anthony Martial um, and Jaden Sancho, who hasn't been involved since he was option, could return to the match day squad. Martial's missed the last few with an unspecified problem. Unofficially, that could be hamstring related. No news on Luke Shaw specifically or Diego Dalot, but Eric Tan Hag didn't outline as one of those players who were absent. Oh, although that isn't any guarantees and he could just be overlooked. The big news, however, the headline was that Christian Eriksen on the receiving end of that particularly bad tackle from Andy Carroll in the FA Cup against Redden on Saturday evening will be sidelined until until uh, late April at best, but probably we could be looking at early May for that. So unfortunate. Now that's prompted... Eric Tan Hag to go into the market on deadline day and pull out loan signing Mark Marcel Sabitza from Bayern Munich to provide a little bit of backup in there. Scott McTominay is definitely out of the Carabao Cup and probably also out of the Palace. He'll be re-evaluated ahead of those others' games. Fred is also another option who can sit in that holding role. For Nottingham Forest, Steve Cooper, we have heard from him. Now, there's a bit of a sickness bug uh, sweeping through the camp. Ryan Yates will face a late fitness test and also former Newcastle United midfielder Jack Colback. They're the two late injury concerns uh, for the midweek match. Also, Chris Wood has been suffering. He's on loan from Newcastle. However, he's cup-tied for that match anyway. We expect him to be OK for this week. End. There was a lot of talk about um, Forrest's pursuit of PSG goalkeeper Kayla Navas. However, the financial package um, that they would need to, to utilise to bring him from PSG was thought to be too big and a concern given that Dean Henderson is only supposed to be around about two, possibly even three weeks away. However, that deal was done. The 36-year-old has arrived on a six-month loan deal. So it'll be interesting to see how this one pans out given the fact that, like I say, Dean Henderson is due to return this month. Hopefully there hasn't been any kind of setback and that timeline has been um, delayed. For Arsenal, also an injury update with regards to Mo Enley, which prompted them to dip to neighbours Chelsea to pick up Jorginho. And that was because Mo Elney, uh, who suffered that training ground knee injury, has undergone surgery. Now, the procedure is likely to keep him out for a significant period, although the club weren't willing to give anything a definitive in terms of a time scale. What they say was once he returns um, to begin that first phase of rehab, we'll have a better understanding of where he's at. But 
my understanding is that it's touch and go whether uh, Mo Elney will be available for the remaining games of the season. So that prompted Mikel and uh, Arteta to come in and pick up uh, Jorginho from Chelsea. Uh, for Liverpool, Ibrahima Konate, again, he's set for another spell on the sidelines. We're probably looking at around about two to three weeks with that one. That's another hamstring-related issue. He's in the treatment room alongside Virgil van Dijk, also a hamstring. Both players will be targeting a return later this month, potentially Newcastle, I think, in game week 24 or the Real Madrid Champions League tie a week after. But like I say, they're not going have a great deal of minutes in their legs. What does that mean to the back line? It probably means that they're going to be left with Joel Matip and Joe Gomez uh, either side um, with Robertson and Trent. So that's it for now. That's all your updates. Now we do have an early FPL deadline on Friday. So it's going to mean we're going to have more press conferences on Thursday as we typically would normally have with a later deadline. So keep your eyes and ears peeled at, at Ben Dinry on Twitter, or you can always check out the premierinjuries.com uh, table. That will have all of the latest news and information. And of course, on Friday, myself and Jason join us for a deadline deadline. Uh, deadline day stream where we'll be covering all of our predicted lineups, all of the latest team news and all of the injury updates but for now, that's it